What's up everyone? Karu here from My Tennis HQ. Hope you guys are doing great. And it's been raining a ton here in Southern Cal. I haven't been able to get on the court, so I figure why not just pop the camera up and just have a conversation about tennis. And I've had this subject in my head that I've talked to some players already, uh, some of my players, uh, that I figure why not just, again, turn on the camera and talk about it and create a discussion here with you guys. So the subject is how you can start using your game style, the way you enjoy playing tennis, to create pressure on your opponents when you're playing a match so you can start winning more matches. So what we're gonna cover is adding pressure before we even play the match and then utilizing that game style, your, your shot selection, all that to create pressure during each point, point at point, um, how the match is going to be played and hopefully be played your style and not your opponent. So first, what happens before we even get on the court, right? So I've talked about this before on this channel and I truly believe that for you to be successful in competition, you need to have a very good understanding of who you are as a player, a player identity. But most amateurs have a very limited understanding of their own style, like who they are as a player um, or even their opponents. We'll define ourselves as, as things like baseliner, serve and volley, or, you know, an aggressive player, an aggressive baseliner, a counter puncher, all those, those terms. But those terms are very vague. They don't really bring in any substance. So instead of defining yourself with these vague terms, I want you to try to understand your game from like your opponent's perspective. What, what would your opponent, what is this counter report on you? What would that be, um, you know, if someone is, getting ready to play against you. So let's use my game as an example. So if someone's writing a scouting report on me, I'm sure it would come up great back and great returns, um, consistency, uh, able to take the ball early and you know just good timing, good ball striker. And then on the opposite side, maybe forehand breaks down a little bit more, serve is okay, um, decent mover, nothing special, but still can come up with like good shots from difficult positions on the court. So when we reverse engineered the, the thinking of like, oh, what if, what if I was playing myself? What would I, what would I try to avoid? Like, where would I try to avoid hitting? Cause I know, you know, I know what shot would come if I hit a certain ball, right? Like I try to dominate, for example, with my back in the back in line. I'm like, well, that's a shot I don't really want to give to him. That adds a little bit of pressure. But I'm also just one example. We can look at, you know, professional tennis players you have um, a John Isner who is going to get on the court and you know what he's gonna do, right? He's gonna try to serve really big, he's gonna end the points really fast, even off the return, he's going for it. And even if he's not a very consistent guy, he's adding pressure because you understand the game style. So you're getting on the court, it's like, ah, you know, I have to make a lot of first serves because if I hit second serves, he's gonna go at it. Or completely opposite from, from Isner, maybe a guy like Rafa, who is incredibly consistent, who has a deadly forehand, uh, who's really fast. So he's, he's adding pressure in lots of ways around the court. So yes, you can say, yeah, Rafa is a, is a grinder or is a baseline or is a what, whatever you wanna call him. But that, again, that's too vague. Like we need more substance um, when we're defining ourselves, when we're trying to find our identity. And that, knowing that, knowing that identity, like for example, I could never add pressure like Rafa. I would never be adding pressure with a lot of topspin. That's just not my shot. I play a little bit more through, my, my game style will be different. Because think about it, we all kind of know what every player is going to do on tour. We know what Federer likes to do. We know what Rafa likes to do. We know what Novak likes to do. We know what all the guys like to do and obviously they know that as well they get on the court they they're prepared to to face what that opponent has to, to throw at them um, so you don't have to be the surprise if anything when people kind of know who you, who you are um, it will you add a little bit of pressure maybe it's just your serve like oh man I'm gonna play you know John today has a great serve and they're feeling a little bit of pressure maybe they're feeling pressure on their own serve at that point or whatever it is, having that understanding, super important. And the second part is how do we actually add pressure point to point? So again, we, we try to implement our own game styles when we're playing. If we're not doing that, we're probably losing the match. If we're just improvising, just kind of playing off the other player's tactics, you're probably going to lose. You want to be playing at your own style. And, and 
point in and point out, you, you want to try to implement it. So for example, you know that I like to hit my back end down the line and that I hit it well, right? So you're playing against me in this situation. So as we're playing the point, it's going to be in your head that if I hit a cross court ball or if I hit into cruise back end with not, without quality, I'm in trouble. So that adds pressure. All of a sudden, that left side of the court, that edge side of the court becomes much smaller. It becomes like you're trying to avoid. And maybe I already, knowing that you're trying to avoid that, I'm starting to cover the other side. I'm more ready to hit four ends. And all of a sudden, it's, you're thinking, where do I hit? So you need to look at your own game and think, okay, what are, maybe I do a couple things really, really well. Maybe I have like a, when I hit my forehand from shoulder height, I can really crack it. So every time I see it, I'm gonna go big and that's gonna add some pressure. So your opponent is gonna try to avoid playing high and all of a sudden, maybe they can't do it. Maybe they're overthinking. That's why professional tennis players, especially at the top, they make silly errors as well because they know what their opponents do really well and they're trying to avoid that. So they have to play with much smaller margins. They have to play great shots sometimes just so their opponents doesn't hit, don't hit the shot that they wanna hit. Uh, so that's why it's, like, it's, it's easy to say, oh, how did he make that mistake? He could have just gone cross here. But like, maybe if he had gone cross, he would have given the exact shot that their opponent wanted to put it away maybe down the line. Again, there's a million different ways of doing that. Just think about all the pros, right? Like Rafa with his forehand, you know, can go inside in or inside out. Like if you hit that shot and he's hitting a forehand there where he runs around the back and good luck knowing where he's gonna go, right? So you're trying to avoid that, that at all costs and then maybe you press it, you make a mistake. Those things happen. So you understanding your game that way, like what, what are the couple shots that I do really well that I can add some pressure, maybe even early on. It could be returns, it could be with your serving volley, it could be whatever. Um, but that you are making the court a little bit smaller, right? Like they are gonna try to avoid hitting that spot over and over. And if you can make them hit that spot over and over, that's going to be obviously beneficial to your game and probably lead to more wins. And just to wrap it all together and end this conversation, I think a good way for you to, to look at this is Okay, I maybe you only do one thing well today. Maybe it's only like your forehand down the line that is good, right? Um, try to add little components to your game that will add pressure. You, you most likely won't be very good at everything. You will be pretty good at some things, you'll be pretty average at certain things and probably pretty bad at a couple things as well. We always gotta work on all those things, but you know, if you can add, for example, again, in my, in my situation, well, good ball striking, um, good redirecting of the ball, um, good back end, good returns. That's four things that adds pressure to my opponent. I can manage everything else and I'll be okay. In, in your game, maybe it's like your forehand on the line is really good. Maybe you add the component of like, oh, I have a lot of top spin actually. So I'm, I play high and heavy. So all of a sudden I have a good big ball down the line that I can hit it, but I also play high and heavy, which is annoying. And then I add speed. Maybe I become a bit faster on the court and I can do all these things. So I, I add, so all of a sudden I have like three different things that put pressure on my opponent. They will know before they play you, they will feel it as they're playing you. Um, and then you're just going to be more, more successful during matches. So I think that's a good way of like actually improving again as a competitor. It's not about hitting the ball great just hitting plenty of good hitters who are bad players because they don't understand this part of the game. That is a game that you have to, to put the ball where it's going to add, hurt your opponent the most. That's going to add more pressure to your opponent. And that's what's on the long run, on the course of a match, is going to actually sort of like, you might start here together but as the match goes on and you're adding more pressure, you start going up, going up, and then you just run away with it. And of course, I wanna do this on court eventually um, and just really show you guys that. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Happy New Year. I don't know if by the time I post it will be 2021 or 2022, but happy New Year. 2022 is going to be great for my tennis HQ, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Sign up to our email list so you don't miss what's coming. We got some really cool things the pipeline that I can so can't talk about it just yet. Uh, but make sure you subscribe, email list, visit mytennisissue.com, and I'll see you guys on the next one.